my first thought was that I'm going to die. Coughing blood for me, it's something that I normally see in movies and when someone is about to die. So already those thoughts, they were already, you know, in my mind that, oh, is, is this it? I'm educated. I have a medical degree, but I never thought that it would happen to me, the typical thing. I started coughing at night. Eventually, I had to switch on the lights and it was just blood all over, you know. Then I was like, hey, mom, you know, it's actually terrible, like what I'm seeing now. And um, everyone just, you know, got up and they were all crying and stuff. And my mom was praying. I was coughing a lot and then I was sweating and I lost appetite and I, was, I had some pain over here. And then I decided to go to the clinic with my mom. And then they told me to wait for the results. And when I went back for the results, they told me that I had MDRTB. Firstly, because I didn't know what MDRTB, my first thought was that I'm going to die. It wasn't really made clear to me in the beginning that it's really, really life-threatening. I was way in the now. So I went to the concert. At the concert, like I woke up completely, completely hungover and one of the lymph nodes actually started draining. <laughs> so then I clicked, okay, wait, this, is, this might be serious. He said sometimes, he came to his man that why it's him who's having MDR. And some other days, he even thought of killing his, himself. Why was it so important for you to have him live here? As a grandmother, to me, it's really painful to just to stay away with my grandson while I know that my grandson is sick. And due to my grandson don't have a mother, the mother passed away, so I just needed to take care of my grandson. It's really painful, but what makes me to not feel bad uh, like all the time is because of I, I see my grandson is getting well. Did you ever get the Oh, yeah, yeah, I did. How yeah. was that? <laughs> <laughs> you vomit so much that I can remember from waking up in my bathroom and there's this broken tile and I would lie horizontally on the floor and I would look at this tile <laughs> and I would think I should fix this. <laughs> Most of the time you feel really alone not because people like reject you just because you feel like you can't emotionally attach and there's just this constant fog. I ended up in a place where I couldn't walk I couldn't like turn open taps. I couldn't brush my teeth. I told myself that uh, if really I want to get better, I'll have to, you know, it will come with the pain for sure, then I'll have to take it. How did that feel to finally be discharged? <laughs> it felt great. It felt amazing. But my sister was shocked though. She was standing right here and I was sitting here and she was like, I hope you didn't run away from the hospital and I was like, no, I was discharged and she said, I want to see the papers. <laughs> Is your mom happy to have you back at home? <laughs> yeah. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> All the time or just some of the time? Yes. Some of the time, no. No, some of the time. Oh, you always oh. have... <laughs> I realized that it's not my fault that I had TB. I didn't ask for it, it just came. One friend did ask, like, what kind of places are you hanging out in? And I'm like, well, the same as you, like, we hang out together. <laughs> I think that people need to understand that it's not you doing something and risking getting TB. It's literally you breathing 